budget shows the smallest increase year to year since 2011. Now that proposal still has to be reviewed by the city council. The 1.76 billion general fund budget reflects just over half a point percentage increase from 2024. Your reporter in Denver, Jasmine Arenas, breaks it down for us. Consumer spending in Denver is rather low, according to city officials, and Denver rights do not seem to feel optimistic about the city's economy. Chief Financial Officer for the City and County of Denver says it's a national issue, also affecting cities like Los Angeles and Chicago. Uh, here in Denver, what these trends mean for us is that our revenue growth for 2024, um, is, for 2025, excuse me, is projected at 1.1%. You can see that is our lowest rate of revenue growth since the pandemic. Which is why Mayor Johnston says he's focused on making Denver vibrant, affordable, and safe. The $1.76 billion budget cuts $77 million from migrant services. At least $38 million will go into the vibrant Denver initiative, investing in neighborhoods and businesses. But for us, what we think is this is a huge opportunity to think about how we prioritize those dollars we do have into the most important public services we want to deliver. And an estimated $215 million will go towards affordable and accessible housing and health care altogether. Denver Health will see a total of $74 million, while the mayor's All in Mile High Homeless Initiative program will be cut by $84 million. You know, uh, now almost 1,900 people that have moved indoors in our All in Mile High effort, uh, and we are on track to be the largest city uh, in America to end street homelessness for veterans this year. So a lot of good momentum in here, uh, not enough yet. We have more work to do. The rest of the budget will go into making Denver safe aiming to train 168 new police recruits, 24 new firefighters, and 60 new sheriff's deputies, reducing full-time employees without furloughs or layoffs, and adding new initiatives, which includes more charging stations for electric cars and after-school programs. We think this is a chance to prioritize the key investments in the areas we need them the most, uh, while we make sure and be fiscally responsible as we drive our way uh, out of this growth cycle. I'm Jasmine Arenas, covering Colorado First. Jasmine covers stories impacting Denver neighborhoods. If you have an idea for her, reach out to her through our website, cbscolorado.com, and you can always call our tips line, which is 303-863-TIPS.